Hey guys, it's Sergeant the Fed. We're back. This will be our final video with the collaboration. I say final video of this session. Yes. With Victor from the Whiskey Panda. He will be back in town from Amarillo. We will have more collaboration rather than competition. We got two pours here though. Uh, the first one we have is going to be a Blanton's Gold. My very first ever Blanton's Gold. And I wasn't even, even open it. It was going to be a gift to my dad. And, and my dad passed on it. Good reason. His reason. Uh, this Blanton's Gold is, is 94 proof. This is European Blanton's Gold. Um, I was able to keep the bag in the box from the Specs drop, even though it was definitely not from the same bottle. I was just happy to have, you know, I don't know if you guys have seen the Blanton's Gold bag. It's fine. It's the, the marker. It's meant to be smeared. It's no longer Blanton's Gold. So uh, if you didn't Blanton know, gold. we have these fancy little uh, glass markers that ancient, aged in ore sins. Uh, Alcohol takes any marker off, even if you use black Sharpie, if you didn't know. So uh, if you want to just use regular Sharpies on them, they're not as cool and translucent as these white ones, uh, but they'll come off just as easy. It's alcohol, guys. It'll eat the, it'll eat the Sharpie. So you don't have to use a glass marker and let it smear like this, but this is hilarious that it yeah, does that. It's, it's now gold. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and, and have the second glass ready because I hope your second glass is ready. And we're gonna pour up this oh, yeah, sure, yeah. Rebecca Creek double barrel. Uh, I don't have all the stats on this bottle. I'll have to pull them up on my phone, which we're recording with, so can't do it right now. Um, but there's some there's some drama behind this bottle. You wanna pour more of that? You can. No, no, I'm good, I'm good. Um, this bottle is not quite the one I was looking for, but it was definitely one that was talked about from my buddy Tyler to get. And the reason why we're pouring both of these up is because this Blanton's Gold, I think you're gonna be disappointed with. This is I'm a- I'm never disappointed with what Bl Blanton's Gold- I take that back. I have been. Blanton's Gold is a very sought after bottle. And the MSRP is not that much more than like regular Blanton's or straight from the barrel. But the secondary price is where we get screwy. So regular Blanton's is about a hundred to hundred twenty dollars secondary. Blanton's gold is about two hundred to two hundred fifty dollars secondary. And then straight from the barrel, which I haven't had yet, I hope to get some and get a sample to you as well, is about three hundred to four hundred dollars, depending on the proof point of the straight from the barrel. Yeah. Now, when you talk about straight from the barrel, that's a higher proof. I can see the cost. This is not any higher proof than regular Blanton's. So what proof is this? 94. 94 and regular blend is I want to say, it's, yeah, it's it's very marginal. Now, now the gold is more smoothed out and more rounded as far as some of the aging process. There's a little bit more to it. Uh, the nose is going to be a little bit on the harsher side compared to regular blends. Uh, but the thing that'll be very ethanol forward construed will be the flavor profile. The flavor profile is not what I expected. When I thought Blanton's gold, my thought and hype was Buffalo Trace product, medicinal cherry. Mm -hmm. It wasn't there for me. And I'm not saying it's bad. It's just I was disappointed because there was so much hype behind this that I let the hype and the fear of missing out skew my judgment. I paid more than I should have, more than MSRP. Lower secondary, I paid 200 I was disappointed. Yeah. I, and so I'm just sitting here kind of nosing it. And the first thing that I noticed... And you're telling me this is a Blanton's, and it's Blanton's Gold, and he's not even going to believe that this is a Blanton's Gold till I show him the bottle, because it's just one of those where it doesn't smell like Blanton's. It just it, doesn't. It, it doesn't. It's very ethanol forward. It doesn't It doesn't really taste like a Blanton's, and it's not supposed to. It's supposed to be their gold, but I maybe we just had a bad bottle. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I get, I guess, some vanilla on the nose. I'm not, I'm not disappointed necessarily to say, like, I'm happy that I got this. This is definitely a unicorn on my list. I'm, I'm just upset that it wasn't to my expectations. There's something on there that I can't place, though. Well, when you put it on the tongue, you'll even be more mixed up. Once he puts it on the palate, I think it... Okay, and so call me a little crazy but this comes across like a Canadian whiskey. It, it's a lot more ethanol forward than a Canadian whiskey, but no, I no, understand like, the like profile the, you're like going the for. Notes, the notes the that notes you're getting in of there. The, if you can pull them out aside from the ethanol, because he's yeah. right, it's ethanol forward. Yeah, once you get if past the ethanol. If you can the pull ethanol. the notes out, Canadian 
is kind of there actually I, I do agree uh, but it's just weird because it's really oaky and it's not as sweet it's it's very bitter it's not cherry for it I was it's not what I expected I would rather I'd rather have regular Blanton's than Blanton's gold there I said it maybe I had a, uh, a bad bottle of Blanton's gold okay there's more to it on the palate but is it what you wanted no no I I get I get a musty cherry on the back end a little bit of the vanilla caramel sweetness on the front end but overall this dude I'll be honest it just falls flat and this wasn't an old bottle by any means this was a a 2022 bottle and it was sealed. It was definitely sealed. There's no crack in the wax. I made sure to inspect that before I got the bottle. This is a fresh crack. It was opened up maybe two months ago. Less than two months ago. I've had two samples poured out of this plus a pour for myself. And this is basically the third time this bottle's ever, no, fourth time. Sorry, fourth time. I poured a sample up from one of my coworkers. This is the fourth time I've ever poured up a pour from this bottle, and I was just extremely disappointed. Even my coworker said, I'd much rather have Blanton's over Blanton's Gold, especially when you talk about the price point. It's got a a very dominant spice to it. Yeah, but it's it's a bitter spice. It's not yeah, it's, and it's it, not an oaky spice. It's not a sweet spice. It's, not it's, it's, it's not, bitter. It's not even a, a good cinnamon spice, you know? Um, it's, it's like a, well, let me, let me, let me, let me, I was highly disappointed. I'll be honest. And I, I didn't want to construe your review and your first impressions of it, but I had no choice because I've experienced it and it just wasn't what it, I expected. I do get the cherry that you're talking about, but it is like musty or like old. It's not, it's not a fresh cherry. It, it's not desirable. When I talk about cherry, I like cherry. I love cherries. I know, but this is like. This cherry was was left out and weathered a little bit too long. It was almost like a grape that just shriveled up into a raisin. <laughs> yeah, that's that spice. It's too overpowered. It carries through every note mm -hmm. in there, and it's there from beginning to finish. And that's probably what's messing up the cherry on the end. Um, I finished my glen because I poured out very little. But I would not be surprised if Victor pushes that Glen aside and doesn't even finish the Glen because it's just not as as hyped as the bottle was and as at, at the cost of what it is. We we just had Midwinter's Night Dram that ranges around the same price that I paid for this, and hands down, Midwinter's Night Dram blows this crap out of the water. This is crap compared to that. Thomas yeah. H. Handy around the same price too. I can't. I'm, I can't get behind the Blanton's gold. I'm gonna be honest with you. I kind of wish that you had made me drink this first. We so, weren't sure so, if we could go this long for doing so, videos. Uh, Otherwise, so, we probably so would have started from the back and yeah, worked so, our way so, up. So, so that I could have finished off on on those two amazing pours. <laughs> There's still some Thomas H. Haney left for him, so he'll have one to go. But uh, <laughs> but that it just doesn't do it for me. So we've had several pours tonight. Several. And <laughs> what I'm going to say now might be considered uh, a hot take. Worse than Travelers? This is the worst pour we've had all night. Worse than Travelers. Worse than Travelers. Worse than Middle West. Worse, worse Middle than West. Early Times Ball and Ball. Both early times. Doesn't matter if it's Screw Cap or Black Cap. Yeah. It might be the worst pour of the night. Yeah. And, and, and let me be honest. I've enjoyed every pour. Except this, we've one. Had tonight, <laughs> Except this one. Except this one. for this one. <laughs> this one is not good. So we do have one other pour that he's never had or experienced, and I don't have all the details, but it's going to be a Rebecca Creek uh, double barrel. Uh, if I remember right, right here in the center, magic of editing, I will put the bottle in my hands if I remember. Otherwise, we're going to look like two idiots holding up our hands doing jazz hands. So I think I think that... I think that uh, something was actually happening whenever we smudged this Blanton's gold on there. I think it was foretelling <laughs> that it was trash. That it was going to be nasty. <laughs> that it was going to be a mess in my mouth. And so I should have listened whenever I saw that. But 
No, thank you. I'm going to go ahead and pass on the rest of that. So he's not even going to finish the Glen. That's yeah. not what I anticipated. Now, now this Rebecca Creek, it's nothing like what we've had tonight. It's definitely different. This is their double barrel. Uh, I want to say they actually label this as a bourbon, and this truly drinks typical bourbon. Yeah. If you if you wanted a bourbon, that was, and, and that, you, you think of a bourbon, this has the nose and the palate of what you would anticipate for a bourbon. This meets the description, and I think this is one of those, if you had a gold standard, this is the standard that every bourbon should meet, especially being from Texas, because Texas is not known for having good bourbon, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, whenever, whenever you think about Texas bourbon, there's there's two that are, are really big standouts. Um, one of them is still Austin, and um, and the other one is the uh, Balcones. Um, everybody knows those, you know, and they're widely available. Those are probably the most widely available and the most affordable and then when you talk about high-end or expensive texas port it would be garrison brothers yep this is rebecca creek from san antonio they're much cheaper much more affordable easy to find in texas not other other places but it competes with those three i would say those are the top three distilleries in texas if i if i had to put three still austin balcones and garrison brothers would be the top three in Texas that I would say and I would say this Rebecca Creek is definitely up there it just hasn't pushed past because I, would, I, don't, I don't think enough people know about it I would actually put Milam and Green over Balcones okay so I I'm biased because I've never had their product and I'm going to I have the opportunity to try it uh, I had the opportunity to try it tonight actually when I was at a bar and um, the on a bridge I chose not to take any of it because I knew you were going to be bringing some for me, and I figured my first pour of it should be from Victor. Well, I appreciate that. So and they, they had the whole lineup on, on, on the bar, and the, the pours were pretty reasonably priced. They also had the entire lineup of Balcones. So yeah. doing a head-to-head, -head, that would have been crazy, especially at a bar. I would have been paying a lot of money for that head-to-head. -head. <laughs> yeah, and so the the Milo and Green that, uh, that I, I'm leaving RJ with... Um, is actually a store pick and it's probably one of my favorites of last year um, but it's not your typical Milam Green uh, because it's the uh, the white label which is the their straight whiskey or straight bourbon and uh, most of them I think come in at like 90 proof somewhere right about there this one comes in at 122.1 proof, and it is it is phenomenal. I'm not going to throw tasting notes out there because I don't want to plant anything in his head so that whenever he sits down and enjoys it, he can truly enjoy it for what he gets out of it. But enough of that. Let's go to this Rebecca Creek. Mine's empty. I heard you drink mine. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> There's more to pour up, but, uh, but uh, I enjoyed it so quickly. Yeah, this is <laughs> this is the big sister. It, it's what I expect in a bourbon, and then hearing it's from Texas, it just makes it that much better. Because when I talk about Texas, and I'm from Texas, Victor's here in Texas too. Um, Texas whiskey just doesn't quite do it for me. But Rebecca Creek is definitely one that Victor recommended to me for the Spanish Double Oak. This one is is fantastic, and when you hear the price I paid for the bottle, it's even better. Three dollars. It's, it's sub fifty dollars. No, not three dollars. No. Oh, I want to say it was forty three dollars. There was a three in there, and it's definitely on the cheaper side. And for it being a Texas whiskey, I was very impressed. So I get mint. I get a tea flavor in there, and I get this nice, like brown sugar. Adam from Major Zero loves to use the word brown sugar when he, he describes his bourbon notes. So uh, if that's the case, I think we might be hitting the head on the uh, the nail, right? And we might be, but I don't have any oak in here. No oak. It's not oaky to him. I thought it was a little oaky, but I think my mistake was is that the oak has the mint flavor to it. Mm -hmm. And what I thought was oak was actually mint the whole time, I, I, which Adam from Major Zero hates. He d yeah. <laughs> He despises mint. Yeah, he hates it with a passion. <laughs> it's pleasant. And it's from Texas. And it's Rebecca Creek. 
Yes, it's no and, Spanish double oak, but man, is it good. And 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 the thing about it is, is that that minty flavor that you get at the very same time you get a musty flavor with it. It's got the Texas funk, and it it's it's not off putting. No, no, it's but, it's it's but there, you, but you get it's that there, that, it's that not, distinct yeah. Texas heat with that mint, which makes for a very interesting sip. You know. Um, okay, so now we've pretty much tried everything we're going to tonight. Blends gold still the worst. Yeah, and I'm I was disappointed with it too. I'm not going to say that it's the worst of what we've had tonight uh, because it still has a special place in my heart being Buffalo Trace and, and, and being Blanton's and, and being Blanton's gold. I can't blame you for that. But I could put one of the early times, if not both of them, just slightly below it. And I could even put, and, and this is because I'm not a pumpernickel person. Don't you say it. I'm going to put the Middle West underneath Don't you it. say it. But only because the Middle West is not cash strength. I think if it was cash strength, the higher proof, I would have... I'm a, I'm a proof hound, as Sean likes to call it. Uh, yeah, I you, call it a proof for. I'm a proof yeah, for. Okay. Yeah, you uh, got a different word for it. I like to call it a proof for. And uh, if I think that was higher proof, I would destroy Blanton's Gold with higher proof. I don't know. I still think that that bottle is better than the Blanton's Gold. The Travelers might be better than the Bland's Gold, which is sad because that's a $40 bottle that's not meant to be better than anything from what I've heard. All the, re all the reviews on Travelers was, was terrible, and I think it was pretty darn good. I, I and, thought it was pretty good, pretty good myself. And drinking the Bland's Gold, now it's like, I don't know if I want another Bland's Gold. Like, that that hype train, like, that's not a bottle on my list for 2024. Yeah. In I mean, fact, that might be one of the least, like, if, 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 if you put... Every allocated bottle in front of me and said I can pick five of them, that wouldn't even be in the top five. It wouldn't be in the top ten. It wouldn't be in the top twenty. It would be like at the bottom of my list. Yeah. So, so I've been looking for a Blanton's Gold for my for my cousin Bradley. Bradley, if you're watching, don't do it. It's not worth it, man. It is not I, good. I fell for the hype. I was trying to give it as a gift to my dad. He said no. We opened it and drank it, and now I can see why he said no, and he didn't even try it. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> Your dad's premonition. He doesn't. Amazing. He doesn't even drink hard liquor. That's the funny part. And he definitely wouldn't have drank that. He would have. He would have been like spitting it out and then saying, "Pour that down the drain." Yeah, that was <laughs> no, no, thank you. And so, so our samples that we cut into two was Rebecca Creek Double Barrel. Hopefully, I'll have the uh, picture of that bottle in the video. If not, we'll put it in the chat. And then Blanton's Gold, the smeared logo. As a double bottle review with Victor from the Whiskey Panda. Uh, obviously, his pours, his his experience versus my pours, my experience, uh, they were very similar. The Blanton's Gold was very disappointing. The Rebecca Creek was very promising. Yeah, I, I was actually very shocked. Um, very unique notes, too. That's the other thing that I like is, is when you talk about unique tasting notes, I like uniqueness. I don't like the stuff that just tastes like the same. If I could drink everything and taste the same, why would I spend two hundred dollars versus forty? I wouldn't. There's no reason if they if they taste the same. If they all taste the same. But these definitely don't taste the same, and this is definitely for forty dollars superior to a two hundred dollar bottle, hands down. Definitely. Definitely. Well, this is RJ the Fed with Victor from the Whiskey Panda. We're signing out. This will be our last video for this collaboration for this session. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.